Hi, I'm Gus, and today I'd like to talk to you about a very powerful machine learning algorithm, Decision Forests. But before going to more details, let's understand a very important type of data, tabular data. Tabular data is a type of data that's organized in the table with rows and columns. Each row represents a single observation, and each column represents a single attribute of the observation. Very often, Tabular data allows you to argue about each feature individually. So, if there's an age column, you as a human can understand and interpret that. By contrast, a human cannot argue meaningfully about a single pixel in an image. Tabular data is very common format for storing data, and it's used in a wide variety of applications, such as if you had to track your expenses, or organize a project with many tasks, or organize your contacts, or the sales of a store, or maybe a list of guests. And of course, for more usual business and financial and health data. If you ever used a database or a spreadsheet, you'd work with tabular data. You may ask, how does tabular data connect to decision forests? Well, it's because decision forests are the state-of-the-art methods for machine learning on tabular data. Decision forests perform super well on many tabular datasets. They are really easy to use, and we'll find out together they have many other advantages. Now, without further ado, what are decision forests? As we all know, a forest is just many trees. So a decision forest is just a set of decision trees. So before we can understand decision forest, it helps to start with understanding what's a decision tree. Take this example of tabular dataset. It has the number of legs, number of eyes, and weight of different animals like a penguin, spider, and a dog. On our data, you can properly predict the type of animal using only a sequence of yes or no questions. These questions form a decision tree. For example, we could have this decision tree for our data here. For each entry, we can route from the root at the top to one of the leaf nodes at the bottom according to the conditions. Our first animal in our data has two legs, so the root condition is false, leading to a prediction of penguin. Our second animal has eight legs, so the root condition is true, leading us to count the eyes. The number of eyes condition is true, so we are led to a prediction of a spider. The set of visited nodes is called the inference path. This is, of course, a simplified example, but you can already see that the resulting pattern of decision grows into a tree shape. Now that you've seen how powerful a decision tree can be, you're probably wondering how to train and use them. TensorFlow has a library specific for that called TensorFlow Decision Forests. Here is a code snippet showing how to use it. This code is very straightforward. The first couple of lines is basically importing dependencies and loading the data on a pandas data frame. Now, I want to train a single decision tree. The simplest way to do this is to train a CART model. CART stands for Classification and Regression Tree and is one of the most popular methods to train a single tree. From there, we call the fit method, just like when you train a neural network with the Keras API. And that's it. You've got your trained decision tree. You can even plot the tree within TensorFlow Decision Force with this command. TensorFlow Decision Force is amazingly easy to use. You can natively consume categorical and numerical data, and it even handles missing data automatically. More importantly, the model you got is a normal Keras model. It integrates perfectly into the TensorFlow ecosystem, such as with TensorFlow Serving and TFJS. And more, you don't necessarily have to do common neural network tasks like normalization, one-hot encoding, and replacing missing values. Now, let's go over the pros and cons of individual decision trees. Decision trees are a lot easier to interpret than neural networks, make it much simpler for us to understand the model's decisions. Decision trees are also really fast, both for training and making predictions. Now, your tabular data is probably more complex than what we've seen in the beginning. Say, for example, we added horses to the species list. 
we could add weight to the conditions and get a pretty reliable result. But what if we added turkeys, cows, parrots, wolves? You can see that the tree will grow quickly. With a tree growing very large, it will most likely overfit the data. And that's the biggest weak point of individual decision trees. To address that, instead of training a single large tree, training many, possibly smaller trees with the right algorithm leads to a lot less overfitting, better generalization, and better predictions. This group of decision trees working together is what we call a decision forest. And we will discuss much more about this in the next video. You will see that decision forests can be made robust to noise in the data, have usually great results, and they are well suited for training even on small data sets. Now you understand what's tabular data, what are decision trees, and how to train one on your own data. On the next videos, I will explain more powerful algorithms like random forests and gradient boosted trees. You can check out the TensorFlow Decision Forest tutorials linked below to get started, or if you're ready to be all in on TFDF, take the course on the Google Developers website. And be sure to subscribe to the TensorFlow YouTube channel to be the first to know more about the videos on TensorFlow Decision Forest and a ton of other awesome ML topics. Thanks for watching.